Hello there and welcome to ADCraft. Building 101 aims to help you become a better builder through understanding some of the fundamental theories of the design and build process. Each episode will cover an aspect of building allowing you to up your game, whether you're starting out or a seasoned builder. In this video we'll look at building on angles, curves and organic builds. Make sure to check out the other episodes in the series covering build planning and colour and gradients. Before we go any further, make sure that you're subscribed and hit that like button as it really, really helps the channel and means that I can make more content like this. First of all, building on angles. In the real world, there's not a lot of things that are actually built at a 90 degree angle. However, in Minecraft, obviously with the blocks, that becomes slightly more difficult. If you take the time and the effort to actually build some stuff up, like here in my solo survival base, just adding a couple of angled buildings can really add to the realism. The planning stage is the best place to actually start thinking about putting your angled buildings in. As you can see from the planning episode, we have put in a number of these buildings and not only do they help to fill in some of the more awkward shapes, but they make the whole thing look significantly more natural as well, including this big castle where it's going to be entirely built on an angle. There are a variety of angles that you can choose to build in the game. When selecting the one that's right for you, there are three main things you need to consider. The first of them is the purpose of your build. Now, if you're building a base or something that needs a full interior, then building on an angle can be troublesome because you've got things like beds and walls and doors and staircases and chests that don't necessarily line up with what you want on the interior. If you are, however, just filling space in a village or a town or looking to put something around a farm, then building on an angle is a much easier proposition because you don't need to worry about what's inside so much. It's just the outside that you're looking at. The next one is the size of your build. Now, simply put, the smaller your build, the fewer blocks you have to make your angle look good. So if you've got something that's only a 3 by 3 or a 4 by 4 you're going to struggle to get a really good looking build if you are using a complex angle or even if you're using an angle at all. So consider the size of your build. Bigger builds look better with an angle because you've simply got more blocks that you can work with. And that brings us on to the third one, which is viewing distance of your build. Like I said, the more blocks that you've got, generally you are going to look at bigger builds from further away. But consider how far away you're expecting people to be looking at this build from. If you're looking at it close up, then you can get some real weird stuff happening with some of the more complicated angles. And you don't really want to have some, somebody coming up to something like this and thinking, well, that, that window just doesn't look right. There are more simple ways that you can get around that by doing things like shifting a wall out one block in each direction and then if you were to put a, a door in for example up here and some windows in you've got some nice flat spaces that you can do that and that doesn't interrupt your building process too much you can still get the same uh, or equivalent level of detail in however if you're looking at something from a long long way away the close-up details don't matter quite as much and it's the general feel of the build that you're looking to get so if you've got something that is further away then you can choose a slightly different angle and you can make the most of that in your build when you actually do get to building though the key thing to consider is making sure that the angle on the side of your build is also mirrored by the angles on the end of your build and by that i mean if you take something like this and it were built out at a square level so you had a that's a 90 degree level like so when you step back at it, it looks really weird because the angle on this side doesn't match the angle on the side there. And you could do the same on the other side and you just get a weird looking building. So make sure that the ends and the sides have got the same distance that you're moving. And the easiest way to do that is simply to choose how many blocks you're moving with. So you go this one, for example, is two blocks and then across two blocks and then across and then mirror that on the, the ends as well. So you go two blocks and across two blocks and across and then you get some really nice effects. So something like this looks really good, uh, as does the three by three that we've got over here. Now we're looking at circles and curves. And as you can see, I've laid out some different sizes of circles here. But where it comes to circles and curves themselves, it really is all about the size. The bigger the size you have, the smoother you can have the curves on them and also when you're making curves themselves you can smooth those out nicely uh, with the blocks that we work with. Now I loosely use the term circles here that I've laid out because as you can see these first three are just squares 
and it's only when you get to this four uh, diameter circle that it really starts to be more of a circle design. However, you can get a three by three circle by taking out the corners and using either walls or using uh, the um, glass panes or some fences if you wanted, or even some iron bars to actually curve your three by three round. And so you can get inventive with the blocks to give yourself a more curved effect as you're building things. Uh, so have a consideration for the blocks that you're using and how you want to use them to actually make the curves. Now there are a number of resources, including the one that is on the screen now, that you can use to find the sizes of the circles that you might want. There's also a pixel circle and oval generator that if you search for Minecraft Circle Maker, that you will find as the very first link, which is quite good. You just put in the size that you want there. Uh, so there are a number of ways that you can use that to get your circles. Now, circles are great in the game. They add something a little bit different, like the angles do to what you're building, and they can look good as towers and obviously as futuristic buildings and all sorts of things, chimneys. Where it comes to curves, again, using the same theory that we had before, that actually not everything is a right angle, you want to build walls and fences and things like that that don't necessarily go in a straight line. Look at the terrain in Minecraft. None of it really goes in a straight line for much, so you can actually build some curves. Again, if you're using tools like World Edit, they can create the curves for you, or there is a method that you can create your own curves, and I'll show you that now. That is, you take one point and you add a second point in there, and you might say, well, that's just a straight line at the moment. Well, that's how every curve starts. Then you work out where you want your curve to go. So let's have this as quite a big curve. So let's have it coming out here. And you put a block somewhere in the middle and say, OK, I want my curve to go through that block. The next thing that you do is you take each of these as their own mini curve and say, where do I want this to go? OK, let's go about here for the curve to kind of keep coming out and round and do the same over here like so. And that one's not in the right place. As you step back each time, you can kind of get more of an idea of where you want the curves to, to meet up. And then you just keep filling in somewhere in the middle until you get something that actually matches what you're, what you're looking for. So there you go. We'll have one there. That's obviously going to be a straight line. We'll have a line there. And then we'll go like this and have that coming round. And then once you get to the point, you can fill these blocks in you can start coming out with something that gives you the curve shape that you actually want. So that's the best way that I've found to do them myself without using any tools. Uh, but yeah, that's how you can add curves to your builds. Now we're going to start talking about building organics. First of all, we're going to cover a little bit of the theory on shapes. So there are two types of shape in the world. There are geometric shapes, and a great example of this is this lovely blue cube here, which we have. All of the sides are straight, all of the sides are the same length, they have the same angle in between them at 90 degrees, and it would be easy to uh, replicate this because everything could be ma mathematically calculated. On the other side of that, you have organics. Organics are things that, due to their very nature, are normally very irregular, there's a lack of symmetry, they're, they're unique, there's lots of curves, and they're, they're pretty much anything that you might find in nature. So what you have to deal with in Minecraft is the challenge of taking something that is a geometric shape like these cubes and turning it into something that looks more realistic and more like what you would find in nature. The problem is obviously all of this stuff that you find in the game needs to be generated with code. The people at Mojang have done a fantastic job at turning some of these code into things like curves and mountains and undulating land and things like that. However, where it comes to something a bit more complicated like a tree there's only so much that they can do so building organic shapes in your world and building organics in your world can bridge that gap between the Minecraft world that's generated by procedure and also nature making things look considerably more realistic the first example of this that most people come across is the tree uh, as you can see here, this is an oak tree in Minecraft, the game. However, if I flash up on screen some images of oak trees in real life, you can see that there are some significant differences. First of all, the trunks themselves are very, very much not symmetrical. They're not just a straight line. The leaves uh, and the leaf pattern is much more irregular as well. There's no symmetry in it. And you can see through to the branches and the trunk through the leaves themselves. So 
this is something that you can actually replicate in the game. And if we look over here, I've created a couple of custom oak trees here to demonstrate what you can do. So by looking at the reference pictures, you can actually take some of the cues that you see in nature and apply them to the game. Obviously, not everything will be uh, will be flawless because we are still using these one by one cubes with the leaves and things like that. But utilizing some of the other blocks in the game, such as some of the slabs and the stairs and also some fences, you can create something that looks a little bit more irregular, a little bit more unique. And then once you've created your trunk, and that would be my suggestion whenever you're building a custom tree is get the block palette and start building your trunk and then add the leaves to that. Make sure that you leave, pardon the pun, uh, lots more holes and gaps looking through so you can actually see the branches themselves. And you can get some really, really nice results with these custom trees. And then just by creating a couple of these designs, flipping them around along the X and the Y axis, you can actually then create some really nice forests that do look much more natural than what you might find in the game. And this will really, really elevate your builds massively. Once you've got used to building one type of tree, you can branch out to other styles. So these are a more Japanese style based around some larger bonsai trees. And yeah, you've got the three different sizes and they look very different from the angles wherever you're looking at it from. Then over here, I've got a number of different size spruce trees. So for organics, they are the best and easiest way that you can start adding some more realism to your builds and make things look much, much better. It's worth noting that if you're interested in seeing these specific trees that I've got here, the world will be available for download for this video. So check it out in the description down below. Of course, aside from trees, there's a variety of other ways that you can use organics to bring your base to life. This includes adding animals to complement what's already in the game. These are some of the sea creatures that I've placed around some of my underwater builds in the past and there are some tutorials for these on the channel but I would say that the key with anything that exists in nature already is looking at references and using them as the basis for what you're building. If you want something a little more fantasy themed you could add other creatures from mythology like this giant tree monster I recently built. With creations like this you can simply let your imagination run wild. Another great way to use organics is landscaping and terraforming which I'll be covering later in the series so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. All that's left to be said is thank you very very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video leave me a comment and hit that like button and I will see you next time on AD Craft. Bye!